Welcome to episode 100 of Angela Watson's Truth for Teachers. I'm your host, Angela Watson, and I'm here to speak life, encouragement, and truth into the minds and hearts of educators and get you energized for the week ahead. Today, I'm going to share some strategies that you can use when you're worried about students not liking you or not connecting with you. Visit truthforteachers.com to get the transcript, links to recommended resources, and to share your thoughts on the show. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by GeniusHourMasterCourse.com. If you've been wanting to use Genius Hour with your students, or if you've tried it but feel like you need more structure and support, the Genius Hour Master Course will walk you step-by-step through everything you need in order to be successful. The course was created by my good friend, AJ Giuliani. He is one of the foremost experts on Genius Hour in schools, and he noticed that many teachers were struggling to implement Genius Hour because of the lack of structure. So this course that he created not only trains you as a teacher in how to manage Genius Hour, but it also provides PowerPoints, printables, assessment rubrics, parent letters, basically all the materials you need in order to introduce the concept to your students and support them through the entire Genius Hour learning process. That way you're not just fumbling through and trying to figure things out as you go. Thousands of teachers have completed this course successfully and they are in a year long private discussion group with AJ on Facebook and Boxer. So you're invited to join them anytime. This is a course that's available for purchase all year. But if you join between August 6th and August 16th, you get four free bonuses including this Genius Hour journal for kids that AJ created. I absolutely love it. It's amazing. So you'll get the four free bonuses and you get the course at a discount. So the regular price is $150, but from now through August 16th, it's $125. And you can get an additional 20% off using the discount code Angela. That brings the price down to 99 bucks. It's the absolute best price that you're going to be able to get on this course. So if you think you might be interested, go to GeniusHourMasterCourse.com. That's my affiliate link so that I do get credit for the sale at no cost to you. And when you get to the purchase page, click coupon code and enter the code Angela. So GeniusHourMasterCourse.com, coupon code Angela, and you get all those awesome resources if you buy any time from now through August 16th for just $99. It is an incredibly good deal, and I promise you won't be disappointed. So we are at the start of season six of the podcast, and I am so excited to be back with you and producing new episodes on a weekly basis again. This also happens to be the 100th episode. So to simplify things from here on out, I'm going to stop naming the episodes according to season and number and episode number, and instead I'm just going to number them beginning with 100. I do still plan to run the podcast in two seasons each year and then take breaks between them. So the breaks will continue to be over the winter holidays and in the summer. But we're just going to use a regular numbering system for the episodes just to keep things clean and simple. So I know for many of you, it is back to school time or close to it. And I'm wondering if you are having back to school nightmares. I always did every year that I was in the classroom. And it was awful during my first few years. I barely slept in the weeks leading up to the first day of school. And the year that I transferred from pre-K to third grade, I thought I had insomnia. It was so bad. I was so afraid that I wouldn't know how to handle what I thought of as the big kids. I was so afraid that they wouldn't listen to me or respect me. And I assumed that these sort of back to school nightmares or first day jitters would get better as I gained more experience as a teacher. But I never really did sleep well before the first day of school. There were just too many unknowns. What if my class list doubled and I didn't have enough seats and supplies for everyone? What if I don't send a kid to the right place at dismissal and he ends up going home with someone that isn't supposed to take him? What if a student refuses to follow directions and openly disrespects me in front of the class? I mean, the list of things that could go wrong was pretty endless. I've talked to a lot of other teachers about this. And I am here to tell you this kind of stuff is pretty normal. Not everyone experiences it, but most of us do. And that includes veteran teachers with many years of experience. The first day jitters are real and most teachers have at least some butterflies the night before school starts. I think it's okay to embrace that a little bit. Give yourself a set amount of time to do some productive worrying. Go ahead and think through all those little things that could go wrong. 
and envision yourself thinking on your feet and handling it well. Plan out how you might respond to some of these challenges, because the more prepared you feel, the less stressed you'll be. So do spend a half hour or so thinking everything through and making sure you have everything planned that night before and allow yourself to feel a little bit more prepared for the unexpected before you try to turn off your mind and rest. But the best advice that I can give is for you to shift your thinking to a different line of questions. When the self-doubt and the what if questions pop into your mind, practice reframing them so that they are no longer fears or reflections of your insecurity, but instead become calls to action. So instead of wondering, what if no one likes me? What if the kids aren't engaged in my lesson? What if I can't get their attention? Ask yourself, how could I make my first week of school so memorable that every student wants to come to class? So now, instead of worrying about all the things that could go wrong or how you would react when there's a problem, you're being proactive. You're thinking in advance, how could I make the first week of school experience memorable and engaging for kids? Instead of worrying, how am I supposed to feel good about my teaching when I don't have enough experience? I'm not nearly as good as some of my colleagues. The kids aren't going to like my class. Ask yourself, what would I be doing or how would I behave if I were the best teacher for this particular job? Really think that through. If you were the best teacher in the world, at your particular teaching position, what would you do first thing in the morning? What would you wear? What would you do in your spare time? What would you read? Who would you hang out with? What would you do to take care of yourself and make sure you had balance in your life? Think through those questions and then be that teacher. Because the teacher that you've just envisioned is your best self. Figure out the first step that you need to take to be more like that teacher, your best self, the best in the world at your teaching job. And you're turning that unanswerable question that's full of self-doubt into a call to action. Instead of wondering, why don't the kids love my class? Why is it taking so long to build relationships? Why don't they respect me? Ask yourself instead, how could I increase the quality of a student's life today. That shifts your focus away from how you are perceived and onto how you can take action to make a positive impact. It keeps you from worrying about what results you think you should be getting and the type of opinion that students have of you. And instead, it keeps you focused on how you can meet students' needs. How can I increase the quality of a student's life today? How can I have a positive impact on kids' lives today? Now, all of this may sound a little bit pie in the sky to you, but I'm promising you that it works because this is the technique that I used to overcome my fear of teaching teachers and doing public speaking. Unfortunately, I did not learn how to reframe these fears while I was in the classroom. So once I moved into instructional coaching and doing professional development, the same insecurities were still following me around. And in fact, they were worse because speaking to a room full of strangers who were grown adults was far more terrifying for me than trying to develop a rapport with my students. I would not be able to sleep at all the night before giving a keynote or doing a workshop because I couldn't stop thinking about how I would be perceived and what the audience would think of me. I'd worry, what if they think I'm boring? What if this is all stuff they already know? What if it's all stuff they're not interested in? What if they would rather be basically anywhere besides listening to me? Well, and all of that's not really that far off from back to school teacher jitters, right? These are the same fears. And I remember thinking to myself, I guess I can't control what they think of me and if they like me. Some of them just won't, no matter what I do. But a lot of them will really like me. If I can find just one person who looks like he or she is engaged and really excited to be listening to me, I think I can get through it. So I was no longer hoping to be the world's best presenter who blows everyone away with her amazing insights and incomparable delivery style. I was just going to go in there, do my best, and look for the person in the room that I was really helping. And to my amazement, I felt instantly less stressed once I had that as my plan. 
Because I realized in that moment, it wasn't about me at all. It was about them, my students, my audience, my listeners. It was about serving them. And the more that I thought about their needs and being in tune with them, the less I worried about whether my outfit projected the right message or whether they would laugh at all my jokes. And from that day forward, every time I speak in front of a group, I practice staying focused on how I can meet needs and make connections. And I say practice staying focused on that because this is not something that comes naturally to me. My nature is to be introverted and self-conscious and to compare myself to others. But I practice shifting my perspective here. Before I enter the room, I tell myself, one person in this room is going to have their entire life changed as a result of our connection. Some aspect of their life will never be the same as a result of an insight that I give them or some new belief or skill that I teach them. I am gonna find that person and I'm gonna build that connection with that person and let the energy that comes from that interaction Give me the motivation to keep reaching for the others and trying to help them have that same experience too. You can use that exact same process in your classroom because you know what? One person in that room is going to have their whole world changed because of you. One person in your classroom is going to look up to you and admire you and reflect back on your work with gratitude forever. Find the person in your classroom who has that potential, who smiles back at you and laughs at your jokes and looks engaged when you're talking. When you get flustered, look back to that person. That will give you the courage to keep working with the others who might be less enthusiastic or harder to win over. Now, the really awesome part about this is there's almost always more than one person whose life is going to be forever changed for the better by you. If you teach elementary school especially, that might even be true for the majority of your students. They will adore you and love learning with you and love spending time with you. But it's not about being liked or being popular. And it's not about being their friend. That's a lovely side result, but it's not the end goal. The goal is about meeting other people's needs. As the leader of the classroom, you are there to focus on what kids need and empower them. Always stay focused on that rather than trying to make sure they like you. So let's recap how to reframe those self-doubt and what if questions that pop into your mind. That way they're no longer fears or reflections of your insecurity, but instead are calls to action. Instead of wondering, what if no one likes me? What if they're not engaged in my lesson? Ask, how can I make my first week of school so memorable that every student wants to come to class? Instead of worrying, how am I supposed to feel good about this when I don't have enough experience and I'm not nearly as good as some of my colleagues, ask yourself, what would I be doing or how would I behave if I were the best teacher for this particular job? And instead of wondering, why don't the kids love my class? Why is it taking so long to build relationships? Why don't they respect me? Ask yourself, how can I increase the quality of a student's life today? How can I make a positive impact on a student's life today? So focus on helping kids and being in tune with their needs rather than trying to figure out what they think about you and making them like you. And when you make this practice a habit, you'll find yourself not only less stressed about your relationships with students, but you'll actually be building better relationships that are centered on what the kids need from you. Your takeaway truth for the week ahead is by John Gordon, who said, believe in others more than they believe in themselves, and you'll be more than a leader. You will be a transformer of lives. So when you get stuck on your own insecurities, focus less on believing in yourself and more on believing in your kids. That's what will empower you to transform lives. Have a great week. You can do this. And remember, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be worth it. Truth For Teachers is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. 
podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. For more great podcast recommendations, go to edupodcastnetwork.com. That's E-D-U podcastnetwork.com.